Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Z Safety along with a few other features of the Prototrack RMX. Z Safety was something that was on our list of uh, questions that people were always asking if it was something we could add to our controls, and we did listen and we took advantage of that and put it in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got a block in here that's uh, 5 inches by 5 inches. It's got a circle in the middle of it. And 0 is going to be the center of my block, okay? And what I'm going to do first is go to the program mode. And in here, I've already got my part name in here, but I could have used the keyboard to put it in there if I hadn't already done so. I'm going to go to beginning. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a drilling event. So I go to drill here. And it's asking me uh, drill bore tap, and you'll notice that it's already highlighted for drill because in my defaults I have it set that I'm normally going to drill. So I just select by hitting the apset key. Ask me where's my first hole going to be. It's going to be minus 1.5, and the Y is going to be 1.5. I'm going to use a Z rapid of 50 thousandths and a Z end of minus 150 thousandths. I only need one peck for this. I'm going to do it at 2,000 RPM, 5 inches per minute, and I'm going to use tool number 1. Okay, so you'll notice here's my zero reference, and there's my first hole. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is the feature where I can do multiple holes. So I'm going to swipe backwards and go to the options page. And in here, the very last question says multiple holes. It's off, but I'm going to turn it on. It says, okay, where do you want these other holes? So it's going to take the same population of everything that I put in here with a different X and Y location. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first X still at minus 1.5, but I'm going to use zero as my Y dimension. The next one's going to be minus 1.5 and minus 1.5. Okay, once I'm done there, I push complete. And you'll notice now that I have three holes, and what it did is it populated and made me three new events. Okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a repeat function. So I'm going to go into the subroutines, and I'm going to go to repeat. Actually, I'm going to change my mind on that. I'm going to go to copy and use repeat, and I have a reason for what I'm thinking here. And it asks me, what am I going to repeat? So I'm going to go from event one to event three, which is all three holes. My X offset is going to be 3 inches from the left side of the part to the right side of the part. So 3 inches. I'm not changing the Y, the rapid, the depth. I only need one repeat. I'm going to use 100% of my RPM, my feed rate, and the same tool number. And you'll notice on the screen now that I have 6 holes, 3 on each side of 0. Okay, so now I'm ready to make the part except I have 2 more things left to do. First of all, go to my tool table and assign the tool to the part. Okay, so I'm going to use the center drill that's in the tool library right now. So I'm going to touch that box, say this is going to be tool number one, and you'll notice that both my base reference and my tool offset are already in here. I'm going to close that, and the last thing I got to do is go to the DRO mode just to set my Z0 and make sure it's correct. So I'm going to come down here and just touch the top of the part and see where I'm at, and you'll notice here that it's off, so I'm going to go to Z, absolute. Okay, now my tool is set correctly. I'm going to put the quill back up and lock it. All right. Last but not least, I'm going to run the part and show you what would happen normally if I was just drilling these holes. So I'm going to go to run mode. I'm going to push start. Let it calculate everything and then push go to let it go home. Okay. Tells me to make sure the first tool's in there. Turn on the spindle, all the stuff you're used to seeing. I'm going to turn my spindle on here. I'm going to go to tracking, of course. Just make sure I didn't do anything else wrong. Stop above the part. It looks like I'm in the right place, so I'm just going to hit stop, go to CNC run, and I'm going to let it go. Now before I push go, I want you to pay attention to the fact that it only moves up to the 50,000 Z rapid in between holes, okay? So let's go. Okay, so there you have it. Everything worked perfectly fine because there was nothing in the way to get from one hole to another. Let's say we had to do the same type of thing, but we had a clamp in the way holding down our piece part. Or maybe you had something like this part right here that was sitting in the middle of that circle, and it's like, okay, I know I'm going from here to here. It's going to crash into that. So how do I do something about that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my program mode, and I'm just going to back up a couple pages. 
okay? Now on event number three, that's the third hole before it lifts up and moves over to the fourth hole, and that's where the collision would happen. So on event number three, I'm gonna go back to my options page, and the very first question says Z safety plane. I'm gonna turn that on and close that, and you'll notice now that it created another question that says what is the Z safety plane? And let's just put it at two inches to make sure I got plenty of clearance, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the run mode. I'm gonna leave that part that I stuck in there just so you see what happens. I'm gonna to go to start and let it calculate. I'm gonna push go, let it go home, which it's already there. Start spindle and go. And there you have it. So as you can see, the Z safety is under the options page and it's there for each individual event. So I don't need it everywhere. Most of the time, 50 thousandths is plenty. But in a case where I do have something in the way, whether it's an unusually shaped part and I'm working on different levels, or I have clamps in the way, or I have a bolt or something like you're seeing here in the way, this allows me the ability to move up, move over to the next event, and then come back down, and from then on go back to the standard Z Rapid. Hopefully this makes sense to you. It is pretty simple. Um, I also hope that you got something out of the way we can do the multiple holes and speed up that part of the process. And the reason why I used copy instead of repeat was just to make sure that if I wanted to change anything else in there, I had individual events for each piece. So I have six events in there to actually make my drilling. But this completes how to use it. I hope, uh, I hope it's something that you've Take advantage of if you don't have an RX yet and you have an SX or an older product and you're going, oh, wow, I like that feature. Uh, I would really suggest you talk to your salesman and let them show you all the other cool things this thing can, done, uh, can do. Uh, there's so many uh, products out there right now that uh, people have that they've been using for the last 25 years of ours. And this is a conglomeration of all that stuff put into a new product that really, really adds more power to the Prototrack. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it for you. I will see you in the next one. And until then, keep on tracking. Four. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat out here on the links enjoying a little free time after a long day of work. As usual, we're hearing that a lot of the videos are helping you guys out there make a little bit more money. I hope that's the case and I hope you take that extra money and a little extra time and get out and hit the links yourself. Of course, me, I'm out here having a good time right now, but next week I'll be back in there doing the next video. We love it when you watch them. We really like it when you give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, push this button over here. And of course, if you'd like to watch the next video, just push the one over here. I'll see you either on the links or I'll see you in the next video. As always, don't forget to keep on tracking. Man, I gotta go find that ball.